Hello everyone, it's Apostolos from EurovisionFan.com And it's Apostolis. And here with us today we have... Olivera from Finland. Hello, how are you? Good, I'm good. I'm just, I'm so tired because I have a eight-month-old daughter. And oh, she does nice. Not, <laughs> she does not sleep at night now. So I was up last night like oh like six times or something so <laughs> yeah i'm i'm gonna probably say something funny <laughs> so uh, this is your first time at the umk uh, how did you decide to participate in the national final i always thought that it would be fun to attend in, with the with the right song, if the song if the right song appeared, something like I felt like I would uh, I would like to have something uh, like deep meaningful things to say, so I could attend. And thank God I'm an atheist. Is a song that felt like it. So what is the message you want to convey with your song? Um, these are the kind of questions I have been wondering ever since I was like a really small kid. And I've always been that kid who made difficult questions for adults. And... Um, uh, I didn't get like a really strong religious, um, I mean, uh, we were pretty much like, like every Finnish home. Um, um, and I think the main message in my song is that we cannot know if there is an afterlife. That's a question that nobody can answer like give a certain answer during this life and it doesn't really matter how you believe what is your world view some people are religious some are atheists some i think many of us don't really have a very strong um strong uh, strong um like feeling about these questions but the one thing that we can be certain is that we are living now, today, this precious life. And I hope that nobody lives their life with like being guaranteed that it's going to continue forever. Um, that we should love the people we love now and um, do the things we want to do now and express our love today and be good people today. Um, and personally, for me, the idea of eternal life is um, is very difficult. It's something it's something so huge, something completely like like out of my understand understanding it's 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 like so i am it's giving me peace to think that we have this one precious precious wonderful life that only happens once and to know that we are not going to be around forever is giving me um like what is the word the power to live today. So, deep things in this song. Very interesting, all of this. So, was this was this song written especially for the national final? Uh, sorry, can you can you ask again? Was this song written especially for a uh, Yom Ah. 
Uh, no, no, it wasn't. Um, <clears throat> I think I think that it's important as as an artist when you're creating your art. Um, I just I just write. Uh, I don't really think whether this is going to be a song for Eurovision, for UMK, or or if I'm going to be the one who performs it even. When I was writing this song, I thought that this is probably something I cannot say. It's I have always been the good girl who doesn't really raise controversial things. So um, I was even thinking that I might not even release this but then my husband who's also my producer and one of my best friends he really encouraged me that this is something that the world needs to hear I'm sure that there are people who who have these questions inside inside and uh, who haven't found like I felt like this um, I haven't heard many songs that are speaking in this particular angle so um yeah i just when i wrote this song i just wrote and the idea of attending umk came afterwards but it felt that it was it was the right choice that it was meant to be for eurovision well, now, yeah, now it feels like, I mean, obviously, uh, I don't know if it's going to the Eurovision yet. I, I hope it does, but people will decide. So, um, but now I feel like the conversation that the song has raised, it has shown me that this song really needed to come out. Um, there are people who have, um, have, uh, come and told me that I have put into words what they have been thinking um, for many years or maybe even for their entire life and that is my biggest win so far if I win the UMK it's going to be great but I think that as an artist there is no better feedback than somebody coming to me and, and saying that um, I have I have been able to um, express their feelings. And could you please tell us something about your stage performance? What should we expect from you? Um, there will be something big something really small and um, it's it's really going to be about the song about the story and not really adding anything that takes the focus out of out of that it's going to be very beautiful i think can the wait to say it yeah do you have any favorite from this year's Yom Gay? Expect your song. Yeah, I, um, well, first of all, I need to say that I think that this is such a great season to be involved. It's like, um, I think the whole evolution of UMK has been uh, so interesting to see how how it started like 11 years ago with um or 10 years ago maybe with um uh, it was a very different kind of competition back back in the days um and this year i really feel like whoever wins or whoever i mean because somebody has to be the last like the seventh but i mean there's nothing to be ashamed of of being last because it only means that you are the se seventh best of the 300 over 300 participators who applied uh, this year so um i really like tommy lantinen 
uh, his song and I'm I'm really digging him as person as well and as an artist I really appreciate his uh, really long career and I think that the song is awesome it's it's written by these um, super popular Finnish uh, artists I mean they they have this band called Halo Helsinki I'm, I'm not sure if you've heard of them but they yes uh, I have heard them yeah like a rock pop music in Finnish uh, they have written the song and, and Tom is really um, performing it the way it's supposed to be performed uh, yeah and also um, I really like Hurricane by Cyan Kicks and and uh, Isak uh, oh he's such a sweet person I really one of the one of the things that I am most happy about this whole UMK thing is that I have got to know so many so cool people like Isak. He's he's amazing. Nice. And let's talk about Eurovision now. Could you please tell us your favorite Finnish entry from Eurovision? Um, well, I have a couple of examples coming to my mind now. I mean, um, if we go a little bit um, further history, uh, there was, I think in the 80s, there is this artist called Vicky Rosti or Viro Rosti, who had this song Sata Salama, which is like Sata Salama is ketulta. It's like, ah, oh, it's one of the best Finnish songs ever. She had this really like bright red hair and it's about lightnings and how your entire life is going to explode <laughs> and 11 years ago 2011 there was this uh, Finnish artist called Paradise Oscar who is Axel Enström and I have an honor to call him my friend nowadays we have also made music together um, his song Dada Dam was he really forecasted like Greta Thunberg with that song it's it's basically a song about Greta Thunberg because it's like I'm going out in the world to save our planet if they don't do it I do it by myself it's like it's her um and I think I really enjoy the simple the how um the performance of Dada Dam was really like beautiful and simple nothing too much just him and the guitar and and the world the globe behind him and i think that he was the one who opened the show that year so it was like yes a start yeah so I, I might say that he's my favorite in the history of finnish candidates which is your favorite uh, Eurovision entry in general? Um, well, I think I have to say Euphoria by Lorraine. That was quite something. And if you could choose any Eurovision artist to make a duet, who would it be? Ooh. Well, right now, I would say Moneskin. And make a rock nice. song. Mm, yeah. I mean, I think that's that's the best thing and about featuring projects. You can you can do a little different kind of like you can experiment. Um, yeah, yeah, like I've been doing collaborations with uh, many electronic musicians, DJ producers like uh, like Tiesto. We did a song called Affliction a couple of years ago, and uh, and I I love that song. I think it's really powerful and big emotions. But it's it's also something I could have never done as um, as as a solo project. It's it's something really uh, electronic and and um, perfect for 
big uh, stages. Yes. Yeah. So at the end, uh, would you like to sing us a part of your song? Oh, um, sure. Like maybe, maybe the first part. It's so sweet the way they're seeing me. It's the worst kind of evil and everybody thinks it's good. And I know that I am the one to blame for this thing. When they sharpen the knives, they would never ever have believed. I like to play with gasoline. And a nice detail, this is exact the same microphone this was performed. I mean, it was not supposed to be um, like sung by this microphone. But that was the one I sang the first demo with. And we just never got the same feeling when we tried to re-record it with a better microphone. So another lesson learned. Always record with a good microphone. Because this is more like a live microphone. Thank you very much for this interview. We hope... Thank you. Wish you best good luck. And hope to see you in Turin in May. Ah, I hope so too. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Bye bye, you too. Oh.